if something reliably triggers shame, it's going to prevent learning and it's going to make someone shy away from what triggered shame. None of us gravitate toward activities that leave us with a sense of inadequacy or frustration, and especially if we see no resolution to that feeling. I could see, even with the nine-year-olds, that when they were unable to read, it seemed to me even if I had a magic bullet, they didn't want to deal with it. They had already started to avoid print. And a lot of these kids would become active and look, in a sense, intentionally different uh, and possibly would have been diagnosed as ADD, but their attentional difficulties were just simple avoidance. They would become distractible. They would become fidgety when they had to read. The reason is they want to get out of that. And if we've had enough bad experience reading, even though we may be shown a new way to read by a new teacher in a new situation, and it was really worth our while to pay strict attention to this new way, we may be motivated to pay no attention to it because we're certain we're going to have a bad experience. You can see it in their behavior, like here is this tough kid, he's reading and he's, you know, sounding out or he's identifying this word, the man went, that's was. And here's his body, like that, like, what is he saying? He's saying, I knew it. I knew I couldn't do this. I knew it would be no better this time than it's been how many thousand of other times? How many people have, you know, tried to do this with me? I mean, give me a break. I can't do it. People who have a feeling of shame or confusion tend to shut down. They don't expand their knowledge. They don't really reach their potential because their whole behavior is geared toward protecting themselves protecting themselves against being exposed uh, for their lack of uh, literacy skills or that limited uh, literacy skills. Like when I'm taking a test and it takes me a minute to read it all, and I don't want to feel stupid because everybody else is already done with their test and I'm taking a minute for it. I'm like the last person. I don't want them to like, think that I'm stupid, you know, and I'm taking too long on a test. And I know teachers think that you're taking your time and stuff, but sometimes we have to, you know, hurry up before the class period's over. And I need more time than that, so I just hurry up and do it, and then I get a bad grade on it. So you, so you end up having um, problems in other grades, um, with your grades in other classes. It isn't about your understanding. It's about sometimes just how long it's taking you to do things because of the reading. Mm -hmm. And the teachers, you're saying, don't understand that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I never told them that just, like, hurry up and do it because I don't want to take forever. And then they, they get mad at me because I'm taking so long. So, I just... Is, Have you not told them because you're embarrassed and you don't like talking about it? Yeah. We haven't recognized in modern pedagogy the experience of shame and how it prevents children from learning. When they begin to feel uh, uh, disappointed, angry, um, bored, uh, they lose that sense of curiosity and interest in the task. They begin to say things to themselves like, this is no fun, I'm no good at this, my, my, my mom thinks I can't do it. And, and then the, the cognitive attributions begin to come in. And when children start to feel, I'm no good at this, uh, then their emotional interest in the task begins to decline rapidly. Uh, then their attention wanders, and then you see another level of problem with the task. It's not just their emotional arousal because uh, we're, or, or, we're all varying in emotional arousal all day, but now we have the cognitive attributions that this task is too hard, I'm, not, I'm never gonna be good at it. And when those attributions kick in, now we have another level of emotion regulation difficulty. And the more that that happens, uh, especially in, uh, in, in classroom contexts in which children of all levels of, of a processing are trying to manage the same tasks with one teacher, this is where children start to get turned off to, to reading and learning processes.